Hi, my name is Shun Watanabe. In this video, I'm going to explain an overview of information theoretic cryptography. This presentation is based on our textbook on information theoretic cryptography. And the details of the topics presented in this video can be found in this textbook. Okay, so what is information theoretic cryptography? Roughly speaking, the modern cryptography can, can be categorized into uh, two categories based on uh, security. Uh, the first category is computational security and the second category is uh, information theoretic security. In the in computational security, we try to build a system that cannot be broken in a realistic time. And usually it is based on difficulty of some mathematical problems. For instance, in the famous RSA cryptography, the security is based on difficulty of integer factorization. This type of uh, technology is widely used in the internet, uh, but some of them might be threatened by the invention of uh, quantum computer. On the other hand, uh, in information theoretic security, we try to build a system that cannot be broken forever. And usually, uh, this type of security is based on some physical assumptions such as quantum communication. Even though this type of security is not widely used in current technologies, it has a potential to be used in future technologies. Okay, so who initiated a scientific study of uh, cryptography? The answer is Claude Shannon. Perhaps you have heard of his name in information theory course. He is the father of information theory, but he contributed in cryptography as well. A scientific study of cryptography was initiated in his 1949 paper entitled Communication Theory of Secrecy Systems. Okay, so what, what is Shannon's discovery? In his pioneering, pioneering paper, he considered uh, the one of the most basic problem in cryptography, which is uh, uh, secret key encryption in like in this figure. So there is a sender, Alice, and a receiver, Bob. And Alice wants to send a secret message to Bob. And Alice sent a message by encrypting the message into a cipher text by using a secret key shared with Bob. Usually a secret key is uh, some random number table like this figure. And in his paper, Shannon introduced uh, how to define security of secret key encryption system. And he proved that in order to uh, guarantee the security, the length of the key must be as long as the message length. Uh, so in cryptography, it is important problem to consider how to share a secret key, which is known as the secret key agreement problem. And usually in order to realize uh, information theoretically secure secret key, uh, we use, uh, we rely on certain physical assumptions such as availability of quantum communication or availability of biometric data. Ideally, by using such physical resources, the legitimate parties can share a perfect secret key. However, in practice, the shared key might be disturbed by, disturbed or erased by noise, or part of the secret key might be leaked to the adversary. So we need to consider the problem such as, can we share a secret key even if there is a noise, or can we share a secret key even if a part of the key is leaked to the adversary? The question to the first question can be handled by a technique called information reconciliation, 
and it is related to data compression or error correction. On the other hand, the second question can be handled by the technique called random number generation. And in, in these problems, entropy, mutual information, and their variant play an important role. Another important problem, problem in cryptography is the problem of authentication. So in this figure, uh, the sender Alice wants to transmit a message, attack at dawn, but an adversary tries to substitute this message to attack at noon. And in the authentication problem, we want to prevent adversary from substituting a message. And uh, in this problem, we can show that the uh, key lengths needed for authentication can be logarithmic order of the message lengths. So in contrast, this is in contrast to Shannon's claim saying that the key lengths must be as large as the message lengths. So from the viewpoint of key consumption, authentication is kind of easier problem than encryption. Another important problem in cryptography is the problem of multi-party secure computation. Unlike encryption or authentication problem, uh, in this problem, we consider internal adversary instead of external adversary. So adversary is inside of the legitimate network. So in the multi-party secure computation problem, for instance, parties wants to compute average salary without disclosing their own salary. So this is a kind of privacy problem. And uh, it has some practical applications such as uh, online bidding. And it is known that in general, uh, such a task is possible if and only if the number of dishonest parties is less than half the number of parties. For two-party setting, most functions are not securely computable. For instance, we cannot compute, we cannot compare who is wealthier among the two parties. However, if we assume that uh, noisy random numbers are shared between the parties, then for any function, secure computation is possible. So unlike encryption problem, Noise is useful resource against internal adversary, which is quite interesting. Another interest, important problem is the problem of broadcast. In this problem, a sender is supposed to send the same message to other parties. However, if the sender is dishonest, then the sender may send different messages messages to the to other other parties to confuse the network. And this problem is related to consensus problem, which is the theoretical model of blockchain. And it is known that broadcast is possible if and only if the number of malicious party is less than one third of the number of parties. So for three-party setting, we can show that uh, the broadcast is impossible. In this slide, I'll explain intuitive reasoning. In this uh, left figure, uh, the sender is malicious. So the sender sends different messages to party two and party three. And support that uh, party three forward the received message to party two. Uh, so that uh, uh, party three can verify if they received the same message. In the right figure, uh, party three is malicious and the party one is honest. So pa pa party one sent the same message to party two and party three, but because party three is malicious, so party three forward the different message uh, from the viewpoint of party two, in both figures, party two knows one of 
party one or party three is cheating, but he cannot tell which one is cheating. Okay, for more detail, please refer to our textbook. Thank you very much for listening.